Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So for the first time in about a year, I'm at the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. It's a wildlife refuge, actually right next to Kennedy Airport. And if you hear some noise in the background, it's either planes taking off to my right or traffic on the highway that's to my left. But in between, it's a haven for birds. And I'm hoping that I will uh, come across a migratory species it's now uh, mid-September. While fall is definitely, you know, in the immediate forecast, it's 80 degrees. It feels like summer. It's very humid. And in fact, there are thunderstorms in the forecast for tonight. So if I have time, I might get to a beach location and try and shoot uh, a sunset, which hopefully I will have really good light for. But in the interim, I'm out here with uh, a different kit than I was last time because uh, when I was here last year and I'll put a link to it uh, I guess it's up this side um, I was shooting with R6 and a Sigma, not Sigma a Tamron 150 to 600 lens now I've got the R5 and 100 to 500 Canon lens as my primary so this will be actually be my second time shooting with it and I'm really looking forward to uh, hopefully some good uh, probably with some good waterfowl Maybe some migratory warblers, uh, we'll see. I heard geese, geese in the distance a little early for, say, migrants such as snow geese to, to be in the area, but uh, some local geese, perhaps, maybe a raptor sighting. Ospreys may have migrated already, but uh, when I was here last year, I shot a peregrine, and they tend to stay around all year, so we'll see what happens. So today I'm at the opposite side of the park from where I was a year ago. This is basically this park has two main ponds. This is the East Pond and uh, just on the other side of the East Pond there actually is a subway uh, line, the A train. And then just beyond that is, a, is, is, the, is the, uh, the airport. But in front of me right now, at least it wasn't for a few minutes ago, is a flock of um, cormorants basking in the sun. It's like about 1.30 in the afternoon. It's pretty hot. It's like 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's definitely uh, summer weather. And the birds are kind of chilling out. I want to wait around for a little while, see if I can get some birds in flight. And uh, I've already shot uh, some of the cormorants that were resting on the um, poles up, uh, in, the, in the middle of the pond. And hopefully I'll get some more footage of uh, those birds. They happen to be also blind back this way. And that's probably a good spot if there's any birds on the water, such as uh, like there are some swans across the, the way. Uh, for the blinds, if there, are, if there are any birds that get they're closer to the, um, the camera, I'll be able to shoot them from there. Probably better than here. I've already flushed, flushed a flock of uh, ducks. I'm not sure what species they were, but I flushed them when I, when I came over here. So they may or may not come back, but that motorcycle that just went by uh, down the parkway is uh, hopefully not going to come back anytime soon. Told you I was near a highway. So... Uh, We'll see what happens. You know, I've got quite a bit of time before sunset approaches and I make my way to my second location. So, see what happens. It would be nice if like the R3 and the uh, Sony Alpha 1, if the, when I'm shooting electronic shutter, you know, I could, I could turn on some kind of artificial um, you know, shutter sound. From there, the birds wouldn't hear it, you know, but, you know, but it would just make it easier for me to tell when I'm actually uh, firing. It looks like an egret. Bit too far away, it's not gonna be much of a shot. I already know my next purchase is going to be a 1.4x extender. I caught that duck.
Kingfish. Okay, and I know where his roost is because I've seen that bird before. It roosts over by the blind. So if I'm going to get a decent shot of the kingfisher, I'm going to have to change my location. So, right. so from this point, I have to be very, very, very quiet. I don't see the kingfisher, but I do see a flock of ducks. They look like mallards or black ducks. So while I'm waiting for the kingfisher to return, I'll see what other waterfowl come close enough to the blind that I can get a decent shot. Another thing I'm going to have to get is a camera cover for this lens because this thing is bright white. If I stick it outside, the birds will surely see it, sure, surely see it and uh, go scooting off in the other direction. So I'm just going to Stay inside as much in the shade as I can. I said, stay right there, buddy. Stay right there. You know, a lot of water birds do flybys here. And as I'm looking across at another bird, I'm not sure what they are, but I'm just gonna use my camera to see if I can zoom in and see what it is. And there it goes. This is a wintering area for snow geese. So I'll definitely be back here later in the year and during the winter. We got snow geese. We get brants, other ducks such as ruddy ducks once you're down here, ringnecks, off the ocean we get a lot of idrus and golden eye, things like that. So, so this is a pretty good spot for, for certainly for, for, for waterfowl catching. I'm not getting any great shots here because really the, photo, the, the, the images will be much more photographic, phot photographic if I'm uh, lower down to the water the list of things I need to do to get the kind of shots I really want. Because now I'm thinking about a blind, I'm thinking about a stool that I can sit on, because at my age, when my bad knees, it's hard for me to just lie down and get back up. So I need a stool and a blind and this and that. This could be a really expensive hobby, but it's a lot of fun. And that's why I do it. So I realize why the Kingfisher isn't over here, because the tree that they used to roost on which was right over here to the left, is no longer there. At least not, it's, not, it's not vertical. It's basically right now it's lying down. It must have been knocked down by one of the recent storms. We've had several significant uh, weather events since the last time I was here. The, at least the last time I was here at this side of the park. So unfortunately that tree is now down. It's lying down. It's a duck roosting on it. I can't really see much of it. And some more of these small ducks swimming by. So I guess I'll just grab some shots of them, whatever they are. And then I'll move over to another blind where I'm hoping. Oh, damn it, took off. And I'm hoping that there will be some mongatory songbirds in the other blind. So I'm going to see if I can get some more birds in flight and then I'll move on to the second location. I've moved over to the second blind, which is overlooking a pond. Where well, they call it the small pond, it's really more of a uh, tidal pool because it goes up and down with the tide. It's a good spot for birds, such as uh, flycatchers, especially phoebes, which I've shot here 
Um, I once uh, got a um, white crown night heron here. Um, and uh, the reason I had a water thrush during um, migration. So I've heard birds in the, in the nearby. I'm not sure what they were. And right now there's nothing in view, but it's still pretty early. And a lot of insects flying around, so I'm sure that sooner or later some little songbird's gonna come over here looking for a snack. And I'm really surprised that there's hardly anybody else around. It's a beautiful day, kind of high blue skies. Um, there's a there's a there's a, over, a slight overcast from the wildfires out west, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah. And there's really nobody here. All the all the hikers, I think, are probably on the other side of the park because that's you know that's where the parking lot is. So fine with me. All right, so I'm going to shut you off, and if there's any activity, if any activity pops up, I'll turn you back on, and we'll see what we got. I've got a wood duck. It's kind of cruising around like a submarine, skimming the surface. The water is uh, covered with could be bladder warts. And the duck is feeding off the plants or feeding off insects or both. Really beautiful bird. Of course it's kind of circling away from me now so I'm going to wait and see if it gets a little closer and I can get some really nice shots of it. And whatever I do get you're going to see right after this. So I'm back at my original location and actually I had to make a correction on an idea I made earlier because the birds that are still there across the other side of the pond are not gulls. They are actually little egrets. And not only that, well there's about 11 of them, there's also a mix among them are some uh, greater yellow legs, a sandpiper. And I was only able to make that identification because of this lens, this 100 to 500 is really sharp. I took some shots and then when I zoomed in I realized that, you know, what, what they were because they said they, they it didn't seem to be gulls, but I can show what they were. And I can't, you know, bear, by my bare eyes, I certainly can't tell what they are. But with this uh, camera and this lens, I definitely can. So I'm going to put those, the couple of those shots up there. Um, also, they're not great shots, but you know, they're good for identification and for, uh, say, uh, sending um, sightings to eBirds, you know, which is a uh, basically nature site run by Cornell University. For, for logging, uh, you know, for reporting birds. And that's something that if you're a serious birder in the United States or North America, then I definitely recommend that you do it because it helps keep track of what birds are common, uncommon, migrating, etc., etc. I want to get some more shots of these cormorants and uh, any other birds that fight. And uh, then I'm going to go over to the other side of the pond, on the other side of the park. So, as I just mentioned, I was heading over to the other side of the park and I noticed what looks like a pretty interesting composite, no, nice little woodland composition right along the path here, which is leading to the highway. So, you're going to hear a lot of noise between the wind and the, uh, the trees rustling and the fact that I'm right near both the airport and uh, the highway over here. But nonetheless, 
This looks like a very nice little woodland composition and when the fall foliage hits, it's really gonna be beautiful. But I think I wanna grab it right now and I'm gonna use my video camera, the R6, to do it. It's very simple. Basically, you have the, a line of birches here against the foliage. The sun is getting kind of low, so you got some nice sight light going on. Um, I'm going to have to use a pretty high shutter speed because there's so much wind, and as a result of that, I'll probably going to have to pump the ISO up, up significantly compared to what I would normally do. But I think my own end product is going to be look very nice, so let's uh, go take a shot, and then I'll head over to the other side of the park. Well, unfortunately, uh, the part of the trail I wanted to go to is closed. I guess it was probably damaged from the last couple of tropical storms that we just had recently. So I'm right now weighing my options whether I will head out to the beach location I was thinking about and try and catch some sunset. Frankly, the light does not look that great because uh, there's a lot of haze in the sky. While there's potential there, it also could be a big nothing. So. I guess nothing ventured, nothing gained, so I guess I'll get out there. Whether the light's going to be conducive enough for a decent, a decent uh, sunset, you know, once the clouds really start building up, I don't know. It's, I hope it's been a great episode up to this point. I hope you'll like and subscribe and hit the notification bell that's right down here so that uh, the next time I upload, you will uh, see my content. So I will either be back in a week or two or I'll be back in a minute or two, depending on um, how things go in the direction of the beach. Okay, so if I don't see you, bye.